Thank you for joining us this evening, regular scheduled council meeting of the Park City City Council, November 28th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Daniela, would you call the roll? John Leonard. Here. George Glover. Here. Gary Aldrich. Here. Melvin Kerr. Here. Tom Jones. Here. George Caps. Here. Brandy Bailey. Here. Jim Schrader. Here. A quorum is present, Your Honor. Okay. Tonight, Pastor Bill Coons is going to lead in the invocation, and Councilman Gary Aldridge is going to lead in the pledge. If everybody please stand. Well, as we enter the Advent season, it reminds us that God gave us his very best. And it's only fitting that you and I give our best back. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening. We thank you for everything you've done for us. And Father, may we offer ourselves as living sacrifices in everything we do. Father, I ask your blessings on the city of Park City, on the mayor and on the council members. May they do the work for Park City that they were elected to do and may they do it well bless them in jesus name amen i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you, you may be seated <laughs> The next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I would ask that um, somebody would approve the agenda with adding item I, which would be a discussion on the Bobcat. Um, Melvin um, would like to see us uh, retain that and not use it on a trade. So I'd just like to add that to the last item on the agenda. Jim. Okay, so I move that we approve the agenda with an added item letter I for the Bobcat discussion. Okay. And Tom. I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. We don't have anything for awards or presentations. And tonight we have Jan McDonald to sign up for public forum. Jan. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. My name is Jan McGonigal, Park City Pride Chairperson, 6256, I'm sorry, 6512 Northeast Parkview. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about Park City Pride. 25 years ago, a group of citizens got together and formed an organization called the Park City Pride Group. And that group is a part of the Kansas State Extension Service. And if you've ever picked up a copy of the Park City Telephone Directory, or if you're an older citizen and got one of the original Park City posts printed on a sheet of copy paper, Pride was responsible for that. Uh, the first library was housed in the Pride building. Shelving was donated as well as books. Members of the Pride set up the catalog system and they volunteered their time to open the doors. The skateboard park bears the name of one of our longtime members, Kathleen Woodard. Her and her late husband were major players in getting funding going for the skateboard park and once that was started, the city took over and added a lot of equipment. So our young people have something to do. Uh, Pride also maintains two gardens in the Grove Street Park area. We put a butterfly garden in uh, this last spring, and we put a flower box garden in up on Poston Park. And hopefully the citizens using the bike paths enjoy those. Patrons of the Park City Alive program, which is part of the Kansas Humanities Council, uh, and it's hosted by Park City of Pride along with the Park City Seniors and the Friends of the Library. Chisholm Trail has also reaped many benefits from Park City Pride. 
Uh, years ago, we did a Stuff the Bus program to collect school supplies at the start of the year. And last year, we also assisted in the repair of their outdoor sign. In the summertime, residents are able to enjoy movies in the park. They get a free movie, popcorn, and lemonade, and the family can get together and enjoy a wonderful evening at no expense. In September, we hosted an Eats and Beats Street event, which some of you I know were there. Uh, people came out, enjoyed the food trucks, listened to the DJ, had a really wonderful time. We've hosted two disc golf tournaments this, uh, this year. One was in April, which had 100 entrants, and one a couple weeks ago that had 90 entrants. This brought a lot of visitors and a lot of revenue to Park City. Uh, we also provide the monthly food distribution at the Pride Building for citizens that meet our monetary guidelines. The Kansas Food Bank provides food to the students in the backpack lunch program at Chisholm Trail, but that goes only when school is in session. During breaks, Pride does not. Pride provides the food to these students so they have something when they can't get it from the food bank. At Thanksgiving and Christmas, we provide boxes of food to people with no monetary guidelines in effect. Uh, I just last week did 37 families for Thanksgiving, and right now I have 42 families signed up for Christmas. And that will probably be a lot more. Uh, Pride also oversees Project Friendship, which is a project that helps citizens catch up on their past due water bills. But right now, Pride is in trouble. Uh, our membership's dwindling. Uh, past years, we had council members that came to our meetings and helped with ideas because they knew of issues going on in the city. But now most of our members, of course, are over retirement age and were not capable of handling physical tasks. Right now, Dee Stewart is chairing a meeting at the Pride Building to see if our members are willing to work on a strategy to keep Park City Pride going. And I'm here to let people know that without help, Park City Pride will not be here and everyone will be losing out. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Okay, that was the only person we had signed up for public forum this evening. So we'll move on to staff reports and we'll start with our city administrator, Jack Woodson. Jack. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Give you some updates on some things that uh, are coming up. Uh, as you all well know, we, we got a grant um, for walkable places uh, to do, to get a uh, consultant to do a plan for the city as far as sidewalks are concerned. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of this is going to be handled through WEMPO and the City of Wichita Purchasing Department. We have to follow their guidelines uh, in obtaining this consultant. Um, the RFP is going to be issued December 1. It will go out to numerous uh, consultants to see if they're interested in, in uh, possibly uh, doing this study. Uh, we have a three-member selection committee that will be uh, along with one member from WAMPO and one from Wichita Purchasing Department and their attorney. Our attorney is welcome to come if he wants um, to select a, a consultant for the project. Uh, that meeting is going to be uh, February the 7th. Um, it will probably be here uh, if I can get it arranged uh, and hopefully in the evening. Uh, also, if uh, we decide that uh, the committee decides to to hear verbal uh, uh, <coughs> comments from those that are submitting uh, RFPs, if it gets real close and we're not quite sure between one or two or three of them, we may call them to a meeting on uh, February the 15th. Hopefully, as it's been scheduled, we will start negotiating a contract, whoever that successful consultant is, on March the 13th. One of the reasons I'm bringing it up, um, one of the 
uh, scope of services that I put in there that uh, I think is very important is for the consultant to meet with people from the community that are interested in sidewalks, get their viewpoints on how they feel we should develop a plan and, and what should be in it or not in it and so forth and so on. So anybody that's listening to my voice tonight that would like to participate on that committee, uh, please leave your name and contact information at the front desk and uh, address it to me. And uh, once we get the uh, consultant selected and set up a schedule on how we will proceed beyond uh, the contract, uh, we will notify you to participate. There would be at least two meetings uh, with this committee one initial uh, uh, meeting with the consultant. After the consultant has done a lot of his work and stuff, or her work, then uh, they will meet again with the committee to kind of go over some of the things that they found and get some more input from the committee. It will also, uh, they also will be addressing the council a couple of times in this process as well. So that's uh, where we stand on the walkable places. Um, Prospect 61st Street intersection. Right now, it's tentatively scheduled for December the 12th. I went ahead and had uh, Rick and his folks uh, talk to the businesses along Prospect, give them a pre-warning that it looks like maybe December the 12th it's going to happen. Uh, the contractor is responsible to giving them a 48-hour notice before he starts. But I felt like an extra uh, notice was... Uh, the thing to do uh, so it wouldn't be surprising to them because they have a lot of trucks moving in and out of there and they may need to do some arrangement make sure they use 59th instead of uh, 61st street and the last thing is that uh, and we're trying to get this scheduled now uh, there'll be uh, terracon consultants will be doing borings on the 61st street bridge to determine the soil condition and the pressure that that uh, that the soil will handle uh, so they can design the, the bridge. And uh, that's going to require some traffic control. Uh, Bruce, uh, I mean, not Bruce, but uh, excuse me. Uh, Rick will be meeting with them to see what they need in the way of barricades and stuff. Also, once he gets it more defined as a time frame, he'll get with the, excuse me, get with the police department and go over some things with them uh, as far as traffic control. Hopefully, it won't require a police officer uh, being there, but we do want the police department to be aware of it and when it's going to happen and everything. So that's basically my report. If there's any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Jack? John. I do. Um, Jack, so the 61st Street Bridge, I know we've talked about this over the yeah. years. Uh, so the design of that, is that something that we have some a uh, little bit of input on? Like as far as the walking paths on the bridge or lighting and things like that? Uh, that'll be built, uh, that'll be done according to KDOT standards, whatever their standard is on lighting and stuff. Uh, did, <laughs> KDOT did notify us that they weren't going to no longer pay for the lighting on the bridge that's currently there. And that when we replace the bridge, that lighting will be on us. So we'll have to make arrangements with uh, Westar. But there will be lighting on the bridge on the other side of the bridge and, and up to the uh, uh, ramps. When they do that bridge, is it gonna be a complete demo of the bridge? Correct. Uh, I told them that we, we must keep, excuse me, allergies for some reason this time of the year, I don't understand it, but um, I, I told them that we must keep traffic going in both directions all the time. So they'll probably build half the bridge. Okay, so it won't be. And then be. build the other half of the bridge. Okay. Um, I was hoping they could build two separate bridges and then put right. the median there, but they said that just wouldn't quite work work out very good. There will be a, uh, a bike path on the north side of the bridge. Uh, my only concern, is if you go there and you look at the west side of the bridge, there's a, a steep incline like this. So it may be something later that we may have to put in a, a little bit of a retaining wall in mm -hmm. order to keep that bike path going on to Broadway. Uh, they've already did a field check on, on it. Uh, 
I think they're looking at next December doing the bid letting on the bridge. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any questions for Jack? Not saying any. Thank you, Jack. Mm -hmm. Next under staff reports, we have our director of public works, Rick Norman. Rick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public works report for this evening, November 28th, 2017. Uh, first of all, in our park department, we did get up our uh, angel tree and decorations at uh, Prairie Winds Park. We've also uh, put lights on the tree on the north side of uh, Senior Center. Uh, we did complete lighting repairs at the skateboard park and roller hockey rink. We had had a controller that went out, so we had to get that going again. Have completed uh, winterization of the concession stands at Youth Park and McLean concessions. We've got the lines evacuated and uh, don't want any damage due to freezing in there, so we do have that complete. In our street department, uh, on our radar signs, we had some backlights that were out on that. Uh, we've got those reinstalled. The police chief and his staff uh, arranged that, packaged that, and streamlined that process, so we're appreciative of that. Uh, this is the time of the year that we winterize all of our equipment. We've got plows and spreaders on our equipment. We've got our bobcat ordered. We're expecting that to be a very useful tool for us here at the administration center. Uh, if we get snow, we're hoping if we do, it's not a large amount, but we'll be prepared when we do. Uh, we've also added millings to the Pride Center driveway uh, and also on the drive and parking at the Sherwood building. Um, Water and sewer department the average work orders per day for the first two weeks of November was uh, 22. Questions? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Does anybody have any questions? Norman? You say the uh, radar signs up there on 61st? Yes, sir. Are they not working uh, right now? I think they have to be programmed. We just okay. got them back. It was a factory warranty on that, so there was no charge on that. But we, they've got to be programmed. Okay, I see they're not working. So yeah, we okay. just got them Thank back you. Up. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Rick? Not seeing any. Thank you, Rick. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Is there a motion? John? Motion to approve the consent agenda. And Melvin? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. Next item on the agenda under new business, item A, is an update um, on the Echo Hills development with Mike Loveland. Mike. Good evening. Uh, Mayor, City Council, I'm Mike Loveland, here to give you an update on the Echo Hills project. Um, there's not a whole lot to report, but there's a lot going on, and that's because the uh, Everything is with HUD and Walker Dunlop right now, and so they're the ones that are processing to, to get us to where we get the, uh, the letter of invitation for, our, um, for ensuring the uh, project. And again, it's HUD, and it's, they're just insuring the loan, and it's a market rate project. And uh, so we're waiting on our response from HUD, and uh, we have been providing them additional information we brought uh, key construction in as as a uh, a partner on the deal, and so we had to get all their financial information. It's actually uh, well, it's key, but it's also Dave Wells personally. So, um, and then uh, also we've been submitting additional. Uh, you know, they have questions on the architectural plans and layouts or comments, or and so we've been providing them information on that too. So. Um, I'm going to guess next time we get up here, I'll have, you know, some good news and, and uh, I've heard from HUD. The other project that's going on up there at the same time is um, Colette Properties has a big 
uh, portion of the land under contract, 15 acres plus seven of the lots. And uh, they have, um, and as I said last time I was here, um, January is when they're hopeful to get their, and I would expect that they'll get their approval for their anchor tenant. And um, so they, um, since we, I saw you last, they, they um, uh, requested and received all the CADs from the engineers, the architects, and from Arby's that they're putting together for their presentation. And um, um, I can't tell you who it is, but I think everybody has a, a pretty good guess on who it is. And, uh, and then also we've got, a, uh, we've got another restaurant that wants to, to buy the corner and we're not waiting on and and they <clears throat> it's not a uh, someone that's coming that says that they're waiting on an anchor they're they just want to be up here and uh, and so we're uh, negotiating with them and and uh, trying to figure out if it's going to be a a, a a build a suit or just a land lease and so we're going through all that and the numbers so um so there's a lot a lot of things that are happening up there it's just that i'm not personally involved in all of them um, and I'm just, I'm kind of just waiting. Uh, so, but anyway, is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Mike? George. Yeah, I'm encouraged by what you're saying tonight, Mr. Loveland. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm encouraged by it and uh, I support you wholeheartedly. And uh, looking back at the design that originally was being proposed, wasn't it like a racetrack design that we were looking at originally with the, company, the Alabama uh, company? Yeah, that was the uh, Woodmont uh, group, and and that's completely off the table. And okay. and what this will probably be more like is uh, uh, Kellogg and, and uh, Greenwich. You know, there's a Lowe's and a Walmart, and then you've got the furniture stores and the that's smart, uh, the different anchors in between. So it'll be more along those lines. And, and at that location, then they have the restaurants that run along out in front. So, okay, and then, thank uh, you. So, okay. Does anybody else have any questions for Mike? Mike, uh, we spoke about this earlier, and most of the council uh, has a problem with this. In December, we have canceled our meeting. So I would propose that uh, we have you here on the first meeting in February and the first meeting of March, just to kind of get us a little bit back on track, as long as nobody from the council is opposed to that, since we're missing that uh, December meeting. I mean, January? Is the only yeah. thing? Yeah. January and February? January. So it'd be January 9th and February 13th. So, all right. Yeah, Thank okay. you, Mike. Okay. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is item B, which is consider a request by the developer to spread special assessments for High Ridge third edition to 20 years. Jack. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, over the years, uh, we've had certain uh, uh, developers requested uh, 20 years. Uh, most of the time, uh, they're 10 to 15. is kind of where the standard is. But there has been occasions where they want to spread specials out a little longer uh, to help them uh, either sell houses or whatever when the specials seem to be higher. I don't proceed that these will be that high, um, uh, but it's really up to you as to whether or not you want to extend it to 20 years or not. It does make the payment a little bit lower uh, for the developer. Uh, I think that they're going to be renting these duplexes, uh, but they may sell some also. And so I don't know what their end game is for that for sure. I know in the past we we're a little concerned uh, about the additional interest that it's uh, that extra five years or so uh, places on the people. Uh, but at that time, we were looking at it being placed on homeowners. And in this case, most likely it will be placed on the developer. If they keep them and, and lease them, if they sell them, then again, the, whoever buys them will be burdened with that extra interest for that five years. Right. So in the past, we've had this discussion a couple of times and there's been a little bit of 
tussle between going out to 20 years versus a 15, and that's why it's here for you guys to uh, to discuss this evening to see how you feel about it. And one of the one of the things we've talked about in the past is we do 20 year <coughs> specials, and the streets don't even last 20 years, and we're still in New Skelly got somebody paying specials on it. Um, personally, you know. I think a lot of people want to get into a house where they can get their specials paid off quicker so they get out from underneath it versus wanting uh, extended specials. Um, so I guess I really want to hear some discussion from the council on you know, how do you all feel about this. John. Jack, do you have something for me? Um, <coughs> And the mayor is correct. Uh, usually on, on these developments, the road, road lasts 10, 15 years. In this particular case, they're all private roads, so we're not dealing with the road issue. It's all on them. The roads are. This is for sewer and water extensions uh, to the development. That's so what the specials are for. So this doesn't this this portion of the specials does not cover roads at all. It only covers that. that that's correct. Infrastructure. Because they're all private roads. And that's one reason why Jack brought up this is going to be a lot cheaper. So why would you spread it out over 20? So and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the plat with me that shows the layout of the streets. Are they, is it more of a grid pattern or are there a lot of curves in the streets? No, this is kind of straight in. It's kind of like a straight in cul-de-sac type thing. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm completely opposed to this. I think we're probably talking in the neighborhood of somewhere they, they wanted to, to put storm sewer on it, but uh, me and Doug discussed it, and we didn't think they could justify putting the deal in there for storm drain. But I was saying you're probably talking a total of $200,000 total for water and sewer specials. Has the engineer or anyone given an estimate yet on the, what the estimated specials are going to be at a 15 or a 20 year? Well, if you take... Uh, there's 30 lots, and if you divide them by 200,000, I give you uh, roughly uh, a projection, and then of course take them back times 20 or whatever. So, I think uh, another thing, too, sorry, John, to point out is <coughs> Jack is pitching this, and the developer's not here to make this request. John, did you have anything else? The way you say that, so does that include the what the streets are going to be, or you're saying they're going to be, when you say private, there's, so we won't have specials later that will cover the streets? Well, they're all private right at the moment now. Uh, the width is to our standard, and I don't know that they're building the thickness to our standard either. Okay, so I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think this might answer the question then. Uh, I'm going to go over to the uh, senior housing over here. Right. That back road that goes kind of through their driveway. This is kind of that's kind of what this would be. Is yeah. It? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not something that we have to maintain or anything. Would it be possible for us to get what the estimated specials would be at a 15-year rate or a 20-year rate? I mean, well, I, let I, me I, calculate a little bit. I can do some guessing. But I, I mean, because we'll be have interest involved in it, and I mean, I know there's I mean more moving parts to it, but. I just feel like to make a good decision on. I don't, I don't want to price them out of the market where they can't sell them because we went with a 15 instead of a 20. But then again, I don't really want to. Okay, well, Jack's working on that. Uh, Brandy? Jack, you said these were going to be multifamily houses over there? Yeah, duplexes. So the specials wouldn't fall on the residents, right? It would fall on the developer or the. Correct, unless he sells a, a duplex to. To an individual who then rents it out, right. right? They work out about seven thousand per lot for specials, and you know, divide that between a fifteen or a twenty year, fifty-eight, one hundred twenty payments. That's year. ten, yeah. right? At a ten year, so about what sixty-seven dollars a year or something. I mean, it's it's minute. <clears throat> I calculated that properly. So was it 15 or, or 10? You calculated it on 10. 10 is 120 okay. months. 15 
is what the okay. standard right. is, and then they're asking for 20. There's 30 lots and divided 30 into 200,000. It's about 100 for the water, 100 for the sewer. And I get $6,666 per lot, which is a duplex. Which is a duplex of two. And, and that's not figuring it for 10 years or 20 years or whatever. It's going to be very minuscule, I think. 15 year would be $38 off 7000 Yeah. <clears throat> Once again, the developer's not here, and Jack is presenting this. Randy, did you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Now, we, we're looking at it as an individual unit. Now, if he has all 30 of them, then yes, that's going to be a lot of out-of-pocket on a yearly basis. Right. But it's, also, unit, it's not bad. It's also producing the revenue too. Right. Tom. I was going to say that's just like property taxes. They're figured into the rent. He's not going to pay it. He's going to collect it and pass it on. Uh, when we went to twenty years the last time, the interest rates were like five or six percent on uh, bonds when we did them, and they were also doing streets that were curvy and they had a lot more expense in them and stuff. So this is back to where we used to be, and and typically. 15 years is it, so. Okay, John. Um, do you want a motion to deny the request from the developer or do you want to take no action or what's what's the best plan forward here? I'd, I'd like to know if you want a 10, 15, or 20. I'll make a motion we approve 15 years specials um, for this developer at the High Ridge 3rd edition. George, did you want a second for discussion? Yeah, I'll second for discussion. Okay. Again, for me, it's the developer's not here to give us more information, and I would think it would be worth it for them to come um, I'm, I'm, to hear more information of nothing else. So I'm, I'm opposed to this, and I will second the notion for 15 years. Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'm not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> and that passes 8-0. Thank you, Jack. That brings us to item C, which is consider a resolution determining the, the advisability of making certain internal improvements in the city of Park City, Kansas, making certain findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of improvements in, order, in accordance with such findings, sanitary sewer improvements for High Ridge 3rd edition. Jack. Yes, this is the project we're, we're just talking about. And uh, this, if you approve this, that'll allow us to go ahead and uh, Daniela to go out and get temporary note money uh, so they can start on the project. Okay, John. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution determine the advisability of making certain internal improvements of the city of Park City, making the findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvement in accordance with such findings. Okay. Bridge third edition sanitary sewer improvements. Melvin? I'll second. Tom, did you have anything? I was just going to gonna second it. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. Daniela, would you call the roll? John Leonard? Aye. George Glover? Aye. Gary Eldrich? Aye. Melvin Kerr? Aye. Tom Jones? Aye. George Capps? Aye. Brandy Bailey? Aye. Jim Schrader? Aye. And that resolution passes at 8 0. That is resolution 974 2017. Okay. That brings us to item D, which is consider a resolution determining the advisability of making of certain internal improvements to the city of Park City, Kansas, making certain findings with respect thereto, and authorizing and providing for the making of the improvement in accordance with such findings of the waterline improvements in High Ridge 3rd edition. Uh, so once again, this just comes back to what we've kind of already done. Does anybody have any questions or is there a motion? John. Make a motion that we approve item D, if that's enough. Okay. And Tom? I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm sorry. 
Dan Yellow, would you call the roll? <laughs> John Leonard. Aye. George Glover. Aye. Gary Aldrich. Aye. Melvin Kerr. Aye. Tom Jones. Aye. George Caps. Aye. Brandy Bailey. Aye. Jim Schrader. Aye. And that passes 8 to That is resolution number 975-2017. And that brings us to item E, which is consider an, or an ordinance authorizing the City of Park City, Kansas to issue its taxable industrial revenue bond series 2017 Air Capital Industries Park LLC for the purpose of the acquisition, construction, and furnishing of equipment of a warehouse facility and authorizing certain other documents and actions in connection therewith. And Sarah Steele is here to see me. Sarah? Thank you, Mayor Mann, Council Members. Sarah Steele with Gilmore and Bell. We're bond council to the city. We are here this evening as part of a, a continuing development of the property that is located just south of the can only call it the Hayes Company building because it was for so long. As you recall, in 2014, Lou Rebelli's company purchased that uh, warehouse <coughs> facility and has been operating in there. Uh, as part of that, he acquired the land directly south of that building. He constructed a, a facility, a warehouse facility in 2016 on that and then in 2017 has been in the process of constructing a second warehouse on that land directly south of the Hayes Companies. The city actually held a public hearing uh, some time ago in conjunction with that first warehouse that was constructed and authorized a resolution of intent not to exceed 21 million. We're now back with your um, final action on these, the, the, I guess, second warehouse facility that is currently under construction. It will not exceed 13.5 million, which exhausts the remainder of the total of 21 million that was previously authorized in the resolution of intent. The ordinance authorizes the execution by the mayor and city clerk of all the necessary documents in order to be able to issue a $13.5 million taxable industrial revenue bond. And um, I would be happy to answer any questions if you have those. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Tom? No, I don't really have any questions this time. I understand what's happening. I'd make a motion that we approve the ordinance authorizing uh, the issuance of taxable industrial revenue bonds uh, for the Air Capital Industrial Park LLC. Okay. And George? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second, not seeing any discussion. Danielle, would you call the roll? John Leonard? Aye. George Glover? Aye. Gary Aldrich? Aye. Melvin Kerr? Aye. Tom Jones? Aye. George Capps? Aye. Brandy Bailey? Aye. Jim Schroeder? Aye. And that passes 8 0. That is Ordinance 1038 2017. That brings us to item F, which is consider a resolution of the governing body of the city of Park City, Kansas, authorizing the sale and conveyance of certain property to Utica Realty Park City, LLC. Thank you, Mayor Mann. Sarah Steele again. Mm -hmm. the, um, in 2007, the city issued taxable industrial revenue bonds to finance the Tech Aerospace Facility it is owned by a real estate holding company, but is known commonly as TECT um, here in Park City. That property has, has now exhausted its property tax exemption as of the end of 2017, and it will go back on the tax rolls in 2018. Utica Realty has asked that the property be reconveyed to them pursuant to the IRB lease. And this action is is will take care of that conveyance back to Utica from the city. Tom, I would make a motion to approve the resolution and governing body Park City authorizing the sale and conveyance of certain properties through Utica Realty Park City LLC. Okay, Brandy. I second. But I have a question. Daniela, were you able to? Um, see what the that tax amount would be? I, I looked on the uh, Cedric County website and I do not have a valuation on the improvements. I only have on the specials. So I believe 
Um, that might happen sometime next year. We'll have a valuation, and, and that amount will be available. I was just curious of what the tax revenue would be coming back now to the city. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. Daniela, would you call the roll? John Leonard? Aye. George Glover? Aye. Gary Aldrich? Aye. Melvin Kerr? Aye. Tom Jones? Aye. George Caps? Aye. Brandy Bailey? Aye. Jim Schrader? Aye. And that resolution passes 8 0. That is resolution 976 2017. Okay. I just have one comment about this this last agenda item, and that's why we give these uh, just for revenue bonds and stuff is when they close out, they come on and they're added to the tax rolls. So people don't understand that. All right, thanks, Tom. That brings us to item <coughs> G, which is consider an amendment to the 2017 budget and schedule a public hearing date for a publication. Danielle. Mayor and Council, um, included in your Council package was a request to amend two funds in the 2017 adopted budget. Uh, the first is the Special Street and Highway Fund. Um, if you recall, um, in February of 2017, uh, we had a special meeting. The City Council decided to transfer uh, $300,000 from the General Fund to the Special Street and Highway. Um, for additional projects in 2016. Unfortunately, we were not able to finish those projects and that cash carried over into this year. Um, we were unable to do those projects. I believe there were some time constraints in getting those projects bid out. The cash carried over into 2017 and now we have spent some of those, those funds. Special Street and Highway, in the Special Street and Highway Fund. In order to use this cash carryover, we need to amend the budget to uh, give us budget authority. Um, Secondly, uh, our bond and interest fund needs to be amended. In early 2017, the city issued bonds, uh, 2017 A bonds, <laughs> totaling um, about two and a half million dollars. The issue was for reimbursement of the 53rd Street project um, and the funding of the Prairie Hills. I'm not sure what, what edition. I think it was the second, second. edition. Second. Prairie Hills second edition. Uh, the monies were deposited into the bond and interest fund and then allocated to the corresponding fund as a reimbursement or a funding source. Um, the, re the allocation to the funds counts as an expense in our, in our budget. Therefore, we need to amend our budget to account for that, that entry in, in our financial system. Um, these re amendments require your approval and approval of publication for a public hearing to be held on December 12, 2017 at 7 p.m. Okay. I'll answer any questions. Not seeing any yet. Jim. I don't really have any questions, so I would uh, move that we schedule the amended amendment of the 2017 budget and public hearing date for publication, if I'm stating that correctly. Can you state that date one more time, Daniel? Yeah. Uh, publication uh, for a public hearing, which will be held on December 12th, 2017 at 7 p.m., which is our next regular scheduled meeting. Good with you, John? Yes, absolutely. Okay. John? Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. That brings us to item H, which is consider a work stop for the strategic planning 10 year comprehensive plan. Tom? It's open to the council's uh, wishes. What's the best night for everybody? So, I can throw out I'm not available on the 5th. So, <laughs> I'd put some dates out there, and basically, I was just looking at the off Tuesday. Um, Tom and I had talked if we wanted to maybe move the date or the time frame up, maybe six. Um, versus seven. So um, if we look at those look at those dates in uh, December, it would either be, you know, we're, we, we canceled the meeting on the 26th, so we could look at the 5th or the 19th, or push back into January, looking at the 2nd, the 16th, or the 30th. Or we could do a Monday or Wednesday night. I mean, I don't have a problem with the 6th. I can't meet on the 5th. 
So conflict on it and the 19th. So. I, I'll, ju I'll jump in. I'd like to be at the meeting, but I'm out at. Well, I can't attend any. The, the, I can't attend any of the days of the week of the fourth through eighth. I've got of at, December. Of December, and quite honestly, that next week is filling up fast, even in the evenings too, with work-related items. I'm free on the 19th, though. And I have something on the 5th as well, but I'm available the 19th. Jim, you said you're not available that week at all. That first week, I'm... Week, yeah. yeah, I'm completely, every night, booked. Tom, would you like to throw out a couple of dates and... It's before the next council meeting. I'm looking at maybe the 13th on a Monday. We do it Monday night. 13th That'd is be, a Wednesday, isn't it? Or, huh? Oh, I'm in November. I'm sorry. No, I was in December. It'd be the 11th, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, Tom, and if we meet at 6 o'clock, and if we've all turned our paperwork in, we've probably gone by 7 or 7.30, so... That's a good day for me. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Tom, did you want to make a motion at the meeting to be on December 11th at 6 p.m.? I would make that motion. Is there a second? Jim? I'd second that. Okay. Gary, did you have any questions? I'm good. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> and that motion passes 8 0. Thank you, Tom. And, and we didn't do a very well, I didn't do very well talking about this. What this is, is put goals together for the council to give to the city to go into our comprehensive plan and to come up with a, a recommendation, recommendation by on the list is first through 10 or whatever. Mm -hmm. What's on? Jack. It might be looking in your email, parkcityks.com email, because I'll be sending it out what I've accumulated so far. And believe me, there's 30, 40 different items the council has put out, so you have your homework. I think probably too. I mean, that can all be discussed that evening, but probably some people are, there might be some things we remove, there might be some new additions. Um, from the list that's been out there. So there could be some, some change in that. So we'll just look forward to that meeting um, on the 11th at 6 p.m. Okay. okay, thank you. That brings <coughs> us to item I, which uh, Melvin uh, actually brought something to me last meeting, and I thought he was going to talk about it that evening, but made the motion to approve um, what we have on the agenda for the trade-in of the Bobcat. Uh, so, Melvin, I'll let you go ahead and throw out what you want to do. Uh, the trade-in of the Bobcat, they're, they're going to give us $9,000 for that. I, my thought was maybe the BMX track would pick this up, and you, they're using ours right now, and they'd have their own. Uh, I guess we're going to try to run it through convention tourism to pick up some of the money. That was your suggestion, was suggestion. you would like convention and tourism to purchase that purchase and that. then give that to uh, it needs the next track. It needs a little bit of work on it and uh, the company I work for is looking for a community project and they'll donate the labor for it. They'll just have to pay the parts on it. So I thought it would save, you know, the wear and tear on the new one that the city belongs to that or it has. And, so. Okay, so um, you heard Rick bring this up earlier, uh, but they were not going to let us order the Bobcat until we knew how we were going to make this transaction happen. Um, Jack was able to talk to him, and they went ahead and ordered and ordered it for us. Um, but still, Melvin wants to look at this as an option of, uh, that we retain that. Uh, so I asked Jack two questions. Um, that I wanted you to find out, and I'll let you address the council, and then we'll go to the council. So uh, the two questions were the the uh, just the maintenance and the mechanics of it and its current condition, and then also how much 
uh, how many times they had used that piece of equipment. So, Jack, if you'd go ahead and address the council. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Rick just advised me uh, they went ahead and ordered a machine. We have to have either nine thousand dollars or the machine within two weeks. Mm -hmm. CT doesn't meet till January. January. John's here. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, a problem. The <clears throat> talk to Nick. The it's the engine has a lot of blow by, and you may not know what that means. It means that the 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 uh, pistons are allowing gasoline and air to go past the piston uh, into the engine itself instead of being old. It's being gasified and air with a little bit of uh, uh, oil. It's only <coughs> able to power itself maybe 50% of where it should be. So uh, in Nick's opinion that uh, most likely uh, at the rate that it is, it'll probably, probably be a dead machine within, if it's being halfway used uh, within weeks because he thinks the engine's gonna give out on it. I don't know what a rebuilt engine uh, would run. Um, I don't know that uh, the BMX people have the money to rebuild the engine or if it's rebuildable. It could be to a point that there's enough grooves and stuff in the block that it's it's not feasible to rebuild it, in which case you'd have to put a new engine in, which could be five, six thousand dollars. The blade isn't real good on it either. Um, I don't know if that's a, a real big issue. It's got good hydraulics, though, uh, Dick said. So it's basically where we stand. Uh, they they either want nine thousand or or, uh, or the machine in two weeks, and that's got us under the gun. Yeah, and uh, you know, with with CNT not meeting, we also would be operating under the assumption that CNT would want to approve this, and we we just don't know that at this point. So if we want to do anything tonight, we would need to figure out a way to fund the other 9,000 um, so that we could go ahead and order it. One of the reasons we wanted to go ahead and get that ordered now is because we have the intention of using it for some snow removal, um, which would probably be here and also at the senior center as well. Rick told me they had used ours, he, they estimate about 20 times during the year. They used our Bobcat. All right, so Tom? I, I was writing down some stuff while I was listening. My concern was long-term how we're gonna pay for it or how they pay for it. Uh, we've invested a lot of money over on that end of the park and I haven't seen much return yet, but not to say it won't happen. Uh, but I have, uh, maintenance was another thing long-term. How we, Who's gonna pay for it? I can see them coming back to us. And then ownership, will we retain ownership? I think we would so, it would be it would be at the council's discretion, but I think we would want to maintain the ownership of it um, to one make sure that it is only used here and it doesn't get carted across the city and used in other locations and also if we retain ownership, we could probably expect that we'd be paying for the maintenance and then Jack's well. brought up something tonight that I didn't even take into account, and that is a, a failing engine that uh, it hasn't got the compression it should have, and that's going to be rebuilt. So that's that's if Cummings will will go to that extent. I don't know what they were thinking, but but that's why we're buying a new uh, Bobcat or a new skid steers because the one's worn out, and that's was on the plan to do that and trade it in. So I'm a little reluctant to do this. So. Well, well, the idea was for BMX to use the old one. So they wouldn't use the new one. I mean, that, you know, and it doesn't really, you yeah. know, it's just a thought I had on it. So I was I pursued this last week and asked about it, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. But I'm sitting here looking at all the additional costs and why we were unloading it, and now we're going to keep it. And we're going to still have the problems. We might as well just keep it and rebuild it. Okay, George. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, Melvin could probably answer this. About what kind of cost are you talking about for rings and bearings? And uh, I don't know if that engine, does the engine have liners or is it? I'm not sure what, what's in there. 
I'm, it's a diesel engine, I'm sure, but it's uh Well, it probably has probably liners. It probably has liners in it. Right. Do you have any idea about what the parts would come? I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe five grand, I'd say, parts. I don't know. And then you guys do the labor? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I didn't know if we could take that much wear and tear so that, off the new one. Or? That's 14000 we yeah. got in the machine. George, do you have any more questions? Okay. John? I, I didn't realize we were loaning our other one to them. Um, George asked the question I was going to ask was how much would the parts be, but um, I guess I just I just think there's a lot of unknowns and it just makes me nervous having a, a piece of equipment like that. We'll say for the sake of conversation, a ten thousand dollars that's left for volunteers to use and maintain. Um, you tend to, when you have a lot of different people using equipment in a situation like that, they tend to get, um, I hate to say abused, but there's not someone that's making sure they're taken care of and making sure it's maintained. Um, and then when that happens, is it somewhere we got to go, the city has to go out and repair it or if it gets vandalized or... Um, windshield got broken out on some stuff that was there a while back. Is that something that we're going to bear that expense again on? Um, I just, I'm a little leery of this. I didn't realize that we were loaning, loaning our equipment like that anyway, but um, I guess I, I lean towards no. I know we, we have loaned it out and then Jack and I were um, both surprised at the amount of times that they've used it. And I think if everybody remembers right, um, they changed a lot of the scaping of the track over this last year. And if you notice the dirt pile that's been back in the back has been depleted quite a bit. So they probably have used it more this year than I would guess in years past. Um, so that's something to consider too, you know, would it be used 20 plus times a year going forward? You know, if they continue to, to change the layout of the track um, there's a possibility for that, uh, but I, I don't know. How much does the track get used? I mean, what? How, how, how many races? How many? How many things are going on there? Um, I know they've been trying to get the track uh, up to par. They've come to the C and T, yeah. uh, trying to get a regional race um, that would be in the cooperation city of Wichita and Park City would use their track and our track to do that. And so we put in lighting, we put in new bleachers, well, huge bleachers, uh, bigger bleachers and stuff, uh, more lighting. We've re-asphalted the turns right. and stuff to get the track into a shape that we could entice uh, a big regional right. event there. Uh, I don't know how many events during the year they have, be honest with you, five, six, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I just lean towards no. I mean, I, I like the idea of it actually because it takes some of that that uh, heavy uh, or rough use off of our new equipment that we want to maintain and take care of for many years. Um, but I just, I just, I think there's just too many unknown, unknown variables in this that that could come back and cost us more money. On the back end, DNT is. is and, I don't know, John's here. How much money we put in there, in addition to the original eighty-five thousand? I think and DNT probably put another forty thousand, fifty thousand well, dollars. Let's not. That. Let's not get too far off topic on it. And that's kind of my. Know. I guess another more of a procedural thing that kind of. I just. I feel like it kind of looks bad that we approve something and then send it to mm -hmm. them. It's kind of like. We're expecting them to approve it, and and I just don't think we really want to send that message to our volunteer organizations, whether it's the park board or uh, CNT or, or whatever it may be. Um, I feel like that we got to kind of keep the the dog wagging the tail instead of the other way. Thanks. Okay, Jim. I I really like the idea, and I'm really appreciative of the offer to help off offset some of the labor costs. But I'll be honest, I'm. I, I'm probably apprehensive once I hear the condition of the Bobcat. It just sounds like it's it's done and it needs to move on and <laughs> to, to greener pastures and you know 
I mean, you have to, just, you, you think overall just how we use equipment. I mean, we buy a piece of equipment and we pretty much run it into the ground. I mean, uh, our park vehicle doesn't have a floorboard anymore when we decide to buy a new one. Um, so we were, we use them and get, we get our money's worth out of those when we're done. Yeah. And to still get 9,000 on the trade, probably not that bad of a I deal. I think you need to take that and run. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying on the layout with the hills and everything like that, it looks like a, a tractor with a front loader and probably a drag blade would work better up there than a bobcat or a skid steer would anyway. Um, it's just kind of like we've got a piece of equipment that'll work and we're looking at trying to make it work over there. But for safety reasons and stuff, I would think that, that a tractor would be better. I think a lot of times, too, people don't understand what they do use. So they use a quad and drag it because mm -hmm. I usually get phone calls that, hey, somebody's running four-wheeler on it, and that's what they're out there doing. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about it. a quad. But, but that's, yeah. that's a piece of equipment they use on a regular basis to drag that. Melvin, you got anything else? No, I, I mean, it was just an idea I had on this thing, so, it's, you know, it doesn't bother me either way, so. Okay. So, George? Yeah, I want to thank Melvin for just the uh, request to do the repairs on it, uh, to do the labor on it, but without somebody looking at it and saying, well, this is what the, the all the repairs and parts that we're going to need. Um, I think at this point I'd probably be apprehensive about it and, and be against it at this point as far as down the road and what we're going to be looking at. So uh, I appreciate Melvin's efforts, though. So thank you. Okay. Well, uh, Melvin, thanks for bringing this to our attention. Sure. I know you were pretty passionate about that. We want to make sure you had an opportunity to share that uh, this evening. <coughs> so with that, we'll just say that uh, there was no motion on this and we'll just move on to governing body reports. I just wanted to let everybody know that we have changed our email over to get away from Cox email because we've had so much difficulty with it and we're now using Gmail. So now if the council would like to uh, get with Jesse and just ask him when you guys can get your emails converted over uh, where you can come in, pick a time um, depending on what you have in your inbox, if you're wanting to import everything over, it takes a little bit of time. If you're not pulling anything over, it really doesn't take any more than five minutes to, to get your email set up. Um, so just let you guys know that. Uh, and we'll go ahead and start with Jen. I don't have any comments tonight. Randy? I don't have anything tonight. George? I just, I was listening to the, to the comments and stuff about, about pride and what they've done, and uh, you know, I I, can't, I don't think people really realize where the library, where it came from. I, I remember it started over in the, what is currently the Pride Building. Dee Stewart's mother was kind of the going deal for the original library. Uh, I mean, she really put in a lot of hours there and then it, it wound up over in the shopping center, and finally they got a library, but, <clears throat> but the people from Pride put a lot of, it's unbelievable how much work they put into to getting books, and it, it was all volunteer. Uh, I've, I've saw Pride do a lot of things. Uh, I, I can't help but go back. I, I remember helping them deliver their first their first year when they first delivered Christmas packages, I, I was there. It just, it just took me back a long ways. And uh, I, I think the community ought to be maybe some way of making the community more aware of what Pride is and what they've done. I just think they're a great organization. That's all I I just want to co-tell on kind of what George said there too, um, specifically around the library. I mean, the library is a thriving environment right now. Uh, that parking lot is packed. That building's getting good use. Um, uh, Lynn Warren does a fantastic job. He acts like he owns that place. He takes great pride in it. Um, just the activities they have, they, they, you know, and 
it, it's huge what goes on over there. And being a you know, part of the library board um, has been very exciting for me over the last several years. And then also to look at you know what we did in the basement and also add in the kitchen. Um, and now we're looking at expanding the parking lot and adding additional parking because uh, mm -hmm. sometimes during the day, uh, they have so much stuff going on. People are having to cross, park across the street at the uh, church parking lot and walk over. So we're working on trying to get the uh, parking lot expanded over there. Well, you know, Mayor, I just want people to, to be aware, you know, of the people back in those days, and it was many years ago, of people like like uh, Day's church mother and Tom's mother. Uh, so many of them, I, I, I could sit here all night and name them. But, you know, I, I don't think the city really recognized them enough. I'm not sure that the libraries recognized them enough. But I, I just want to throw that out there because they're a great organization and I hate to see them in trouble. Okay, Tom? Well, I'd like to add to that that uh, uh, a lot of libraries have things for kids and young teenagers and stuff like that, and they get 20, 30 people there. Lynn has events and 300 people show up and it's just remarkable they don't have room for all the people that want to attend the events and uh, he's doing something right over there how many staff so and the library board I want to give them credit too so um, they need to keep it up <coughs> Mel I have nothing Gary I'd just like to acknowledge uh, Jesse's efforts on the city signs that we have on 61st and 53rd Street. I don't know how many people have driven by there. I had the opportunity a few days ago to sit in one of the local restaurants and watch the sign as it's moving and doing all the graphics and all the things that Jesse's been able to do with the software, not the original software where we got with it, but uh, what he's been able to do and the presentation that it gives from people out of town that is a really professional presentation that's up there on that sign. So if you haven't seen it or you haven't stopped by, it might be worth it just to walk over and watch that sign because it's really awesome. Okay, George? Yeah, also the pride, just to coattail on what everybody's saying, they do a lot of good for the city of Park City. They, they include a lot of the events that go on, the movies in the park. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to visit one of those. I had a chance to go to one and it's it's a free event. We probably had 100, 200 people there. So, and it's all free and they provide things and the kids all love it. I've got a lot of a lot of compliments just for having it. So I, I acknowledge the fact that Pride puts that on. Was it the Eats and Beats thing? I had a chance to go by there and see that. We probably had 50 to 100 people at that, just right down the street here. So I like the fact that there's uh, they're thinking of more events to bring to the city of Park City for the families that live here. So I appreciate the fact that they're here and. And I just hope they're able to maintain through new volunteers and, and whatever needs to be done in the city. Thank you. Thank you. John? I can't say anything that hadn't already been said. It's a great organization. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. John? I'll make a motion we adjourn. Okay. And Jim? And I second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Not saying any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. And that motion passes 8-0. Thank you.